Hello boys and girls, welcome back. Does anyone remember last week's question? That's right, what is God? Now, what was the answer? Answer was, God is the creator of everyone and everything. That means God created everything. This plant, yep, God created this plant. And you know that Plants are what releases oxygen for us to breathe. And what we breathe out, carbon dioxide, is what plants use to breathe for them, like what they breathe in. Isn't God just incredible how he designed it, that what the plants breathe out is what we breathe in, and what we breathe out is what they breathe in. God created everything from big animals like the elephant to small animals like the ant. Now, did you know that the ant can carry up to 20 times its body weight? That is equivalent to a grade two carrying up or picking up a car. And that is how God created us and the whole world. Isn't that amazing? And the more we get to appreciate God's creations, the more we get to appreciate God and who God is and his character. And that is going to help us answer this week's question. So boys and girls, it is very important for us to know and remember that God is the creator of everyone and everything. But because God is the creator of everyone and everything and we were created by God, there will be some things that sometimes we just don't understand about God. That's because he is God and we are not God. Now, these things I call the mysteries of God. And this week, we're going to be answering or trying to answer one of these mysteries. And this week's question is one of those mysteries that even adults sometimes struggle with. And this week's question is, how many persons are there in God? And the answer, there are three persons in one God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pretty confusing, right? Now, you might be asking yourself, how on earth can there be three persons in one God? Now, before we answer that question, let us first correct some misunderstandings about this mystery of God. Now, these examples are good examples, but they don't really catch the essence of what God's mystery or this question is. They attempt to answer it, but they don't, attempt, they don't answer it in its fullness and its true understanding. Right. Example number one, the egg. There are three parts to the egg. The shell, the white, and the yellow bits. Correct? And this makes up the egg. So this is an example of how God is. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Correct? Mm, not quite. You see, 
If you were to take the egg apart and only have the shell, then the egg is not an egg anymore. It's not the entire egg when you take the shell out. And so the egg isn't really a good example. What about the sun? So there's the fiery ball in the middle with gases, which emits heat. And also, the sun gives us light. So it has three forms. The hot gas that burns in the universe, the heat it produces, and the light it produces. Isn't that more like God? Well, again, good example, but it doesn't catch the real essence of who God is. So the fire ball creates the heat, but God, the Father, doesn't create Jesus or the Holy Spirit. They have always been there together eternally from the beginning. So again, that example doesn't really get the essence of who God is. Okay, okay. What about water? You can have it in steam form when we boil the kettle. The steam comes out of there. You can have it in ice blocks. And when you put water in the ice cube and in the deep freeze, it freezes and becomes ice. Or you can have it in liquid form, right? Three parts, but it's still all water. That must be like God, right? Mm, well, not quite. You see, with water, you can only have it as steam, or you can only have it as ice, or you can only have it as liquid form. Now this means that it can only be one form of water at one time at a time. Whereas with God, God is both steam, ice, and water all at the same time. Three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so it still doesn't really answer this mystery of God. There's three persons in one question. But what does the Bible say about this? Well, in 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing to the church of Corinth and he's encouraging the Christians there. And at the end of his letter, he writes this. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Paul mentions all three persons in God. And this is where we realize that God is three in one. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, boys and girls, sometimes God's mysteries are exactly that. Mysteries. And we will only ever find out what God wanted us to know by coming closer to God and knowing God more. And he will reveal himself to us. So I encourage you, boys and girls, to keep reading your autobiography of God, the Bible, right? And drawing nearer to God. To God. And so he can reveal himself to you more often. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this question this week. And we'll be asking the next question next week. And let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, that we know that you are a loving God. Thank you, Lord, for your mysteries that ask us to trust you and have faith in you, even though sometimes we might not understand. We know that you are the King of all kings, the God of all gods, and that there is only one God. We praise you and we worship you. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, see you next week for our next question. Bye.